This video is sponsored by NordPass. So there you are working in After Effects and you need to animate a mouse pointer clicking a button. Sounds pretty simple, right? All you need to do is add a position keyframe and that mouse pointer moving over the button, add a little bit of an arc into the movement using the motion path, copy and paste that keyframe so that it holds while you click the button and then move it right back off the screen. And there's the problem. These two keyframes are identical. There should be absolutely no movement between them, but the position is drifting. So what's the deal? This is exactly why you need to understand spatial interpolation. Man, is that hard to say. The fix for this is actually dead simple. All you need to do is select that keyframe and convert it to a hold keyframe. You can do this with Control Alt Click on a PC or Command Option Click on a Mac. That fixes the problem, but now let's talk about why it fixes the problem. Spatial interpolation really isn't that difficult to understand. Interpolation is just what happens between keyframes. It's the frames that After Effects is generating to give you motion between the keyframes that you set. And there are two different types of interpolation in After Effects. Temporal interpolation, which is what determines what happens over time with the property you're keyframing, and spatial interpolation, which is what's happening between those keyframes in space in your comp. And this is really related to the position property. Now, if you're one of those smart people who uses separated dimensions on the position property, then you're really not gonna run into this issue. There are a lot of great reasons to separate the dimensions of the position property, but one big thing you're gonna give up with that is the ability to use a motion path, which I do all the time. That's why I only separate the dimensions when I have very specific things that I need to do. Otherwise, I like animating using motion paths, and this issue is something you really need to understand how to get around and fix if you don't wanna have a bad time in After Effects. I've always been about working smarter, not harder in After Effects, and the same goes for this video sponsor, NordPass. Do you lose sleep at night over the thought of weak, duplicated passwords? Do you feel like members of your team are ignoring your advice to use stronger passwords just to save time? Do you have a way to check to see if your company password protocol is actually being followed? Most people use very weak passwords, so how can you make sure your team isn't part of that crowd? I am definitely guilty of this myself and have had way too many emails from companies that I shopped at letting me know that my personal data has been breached and leaked out into the internet. But I've been using the NordPass personal premium plan for a while now to manage all of my passwords, making sure that I have no duplicates and giving me security that I didn't before. And all of that security is also available in NordPass business for your entire company. And companies are no exception for poor password management. Of companies that were breached this year, 123456 was the most popular password for high-ranking executives. With NordPass's company-wide password policy, you get to determine what constitutes a strong password, and NordPass handles everything else. And it's easy for members of your team to follow that protocol because of the password generator. It instantly generates a unique, strong password that follows your specific criteria. And with the password health metrics, you can quickly get an idea of how far along your company is, and if there are any weak or reused passwords within your company, you can take action if necessary. Plus, you'll have access to 24-7 expert customer support, a dedicated account manager, and an optional training session from the experts at NordPass. So be like me and NordPass by working smarter and not harder. Stay ahead of cyber vulnerabilities using your new business admin panel with breach monitoring and detailed event logs. Then you can sleep at night knowing that your most sensitive data is end-to-end -end encrypted. And at the same time, your team will thank you for removing the need to come up with and remember strong passwords. See NordPass business in action now with a three months free trial here and use this code. Thanks to NordPass for sponsoring this video. So we know how to fix the problem, but why was there a problem in the first place? Well, let's jump back to this mouse pointer example, and this is a project file that you can download if you wanna follow along with me. Just check the link in the description. Now, I'm just gonna set some keyframes on this mouse pointer. So I'm gonna put one there, go forward 10 frames, move this over to the right side, 10 more frames forward, drag it down, and you can see that my motion path is now curving around and there are Bezier handles on all of the keyframes. This is because these keyframes are not linear keyframes. If I right click on it and go to keyframe interpolation, they're all gonna be set to auto Bezier in the spatial interpolation. There are actually four different options in here, linear, Bezier, continuous Bezier, and auto Bezier. Basically, After Effects is trying to make a decision for me and smooth out the motion so that I don't have to do so much work. The thing is, that's not how I want to work in After Effects. I wanna make these decisions, so I don't wanna see those Bezier handles. And it's easy enough for me to either go into that keyframe interpolation and change it to linear. That gets rid of all the Bezier handles, or I could just grab my pen tool, and then I'll just click on one of those keyframes with all of them selected, and they become linear. But I don't like having to do that every single time I set position keyframes. I would much rather have them start as linear and introduce my motion paths when I want to. And there's actually a preference to be able to set that. So if I go into the edit, preferences into the general tab, there's gonna be a checkbox in here called default spatial interpolation to linear. With that checked on, I'll click okay, 
get rid of those keyframes, and let's just recreate the motion of the mouse coming on and clicking the button. So I'll set one right here, go forward about 15 frames, and then drag it over top of the button. You'll notice there are no Bezier handles, but I will go ahead and introduce a little bit of an arc right here. Go forward a few more frames, copy and paste. There will be no drifting because I didn't introduce that Bezier handle on that particular keyframe. So copying and pasting it, it keeps it linear. And then I'll just drag this off the screen and then grab this keyframe, move to my pen tool, click and drag, and that's gonna introduce Bezier handles on both sides. So that will introduce the drift. Even though this one's linear, the one next to it is not. So what I need to do is once again, convert this to a hold keyframe to eliminate that Bezier handle. The mouse comes up, holds on that position, and then animates off. So now I can go into the speed graph and ease this a little bit so it looks a little bit better. This is the temporal interpolation. And this should now come on really quick and easy, click, and then move off. So all that's left to do is animating the button getting pressed. So I'm gonna go into that button, and this is something that I set up with the Transform Sandwich, which is a little freebie we made up at Battle Axe. You can go get it for yourself, check the card above. But it basically allows me to make this faux 3D extrusion. So feel free to use this if you'd like, but the radius is what's determined the extrusion, so I want to set a keyframe there right after the mouse pointer gets to it, so right about there, set a keyframe, and then I also want to set a position keyframe on that layer, and I'm going to press U to bring up both of those keyframes and zoom in here a little bit, and then maybe over three frames I'll have the radius go down to zero, and I'm going to zoom in here nice and close, jump back to this first set of keyframes and actually take a snapshot for reference, go forward to that second keyframe, and then just move this button over, and I'll press this show snapshot button to see how far I actually need to move this. And I'm just basically compensating for the distance we're losing with that extrusion animating down. And I'm just trying to line it up using the arrow keys on my keyboard. That looks like it's locked in perfectly. So now I'll just copy the first two keyframes, go forward a little bit and paste them, and that should look like the button's being pressed. I'll ease these keyframes a little bit. These ones right here, F9 on the keyboard, and then maybe smooth this one out a little bit more extreme. And there we go, the button's getting pressed. So I should be able to play this back as a whole and it should all work together. Mouse comes on, button gets pressed, the mouse goes off. I think I'm gonna finish this off with a little bit of texture and I'm gonna do this using my own script called Texture Looper. I have a folder of paper textures that comes with Texture Looper here. I'm just gonna drag it right into my comp. And then I'm gonna open up an extension called KBar. This is one tool that I cannot live without now that I have it. It allows you to launch presets, scripts, expressions, all sorts of things. And I made a Texture Looper button. So if you click on this, it's going to automatically make your selection a texture looper pre-comp and cycle through those textures with lots of convenient controls. Now my comp is at 30 frames per second. I want half that for my cycle, so I'm gonna set it to 15. And then I'll set the blend mode for that pre-comp to overlay. And we've added some texture very quickly. That has a lot more life to it now. And all that's left is exporting. So I'm gonna open up another one of my favorite tools, which is Anubis from Battle Axe. And this will allow me to, with one single button click, export a compressed MP4 high quality out of After Effects just like that, it'll open up the directory that it exported to and I can double click it to check out the quality and sure enough, it looks great. And there's a lot more that Anubis can do, so be sure to check it out over at Battle Axe. You can click the card above to learn more. Now all of this interpolation we've been dealing with so far has just been in 2D, but it works in 3D as well. So here I have an animated comp of some keyboard buttons being pressed, and I animated the camera for this entire comp using a motion path. I didn't separate any dimensions, and if I switch my view, it's gonna be a little hard to see from the active camera to the top camera, and click on my camera controller null, this is what I'm using to animate the camera, you can see that this is just a long motion path with lots of Bezier handles. If I bring up the position and show you what that looks like, I just animated the camera from point A to point B to point C, added in my Bezier handles and modified it so that it was nice and smooth, and then went in and worked on the temporal interpolation using the speed graph just like before. Because these are all combined dimensions, not separated, I can continue to use the motion path even for things like the 3D camera and produce some really nice smooth camera moves throughout a 3D scene. So that's why I think it's so important that you really have a good grasp on what spatial interpolation is and how you can actually start to modify it for your own projects. Let me know in the comments if you run into an issue I didn't cover in this video, if there's something about spatial interpolation you still don't understand, or if there's another aspect of After Effects that's just confusing to you, I'd love to cover it. If you're interested in supporting more videos like this one, then please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons over there. Your support means the world to me. Thank you so much to NordPass for sponsoring this video, and again, make sure you check out the link in the description and use my code to get a three month free trial of NordPass business. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Ed, 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 Ed,